what up world this your man Bushan Glover and uh I have to do this because it's time for us to be proactive instead of reactive now when I say proactive I mean we have to get in front of this because last time we saw during the election cycle you know we came into the mix a little late but this time we're going to be in front of it because it seems that every race creed or culture has been championed except the black race and you wonder why you wonder why because we days good economics if you look at critical race theory in which they're outlawing the bottom of the critical race theory pyramid is um, social and economic. So that's where we are at the base. And then the top, the I, is actually genocide. So they're projecting in the next 40 years that the black race won't even be relevant. This is why they're making these maneuverments right now. So what are we going to do to combat that? So now we see what's going on in the world today. We see exactly what's going on in the world today. And our silence is golden because if the previous administration was in office under uh, this type of death and destruction, uh, whipping you know black migrants from the southern border and sending them back to Haiti, uh, the crime rate, the murder rate, uh, 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 the mandates and everything. If the orange guy like, that y'all call him or the person that they demonized and made you people hate, I'm sure there will be a lot of pushback because a lot of blacks went viral including all of our black caucus members, including our elected officials, because of the criticism in, in, in terms of how they were uh, reacting and the things that they were saying with the previous administration. I'm not even gonna say his name because he's not in office right now. So our current administration is getting a failing grade, okay? And we have a little leverage as the black race. So this is our mass exodus. We have to get outside of the two-party system out of the Republican and Democratic Democratic system because these are two rivaling tribes and we've always been collateral damage and we've always been the base and the good economic for the Democratic Party. But now that we have leverage, the Biden administration is failing to, um, is failing greater than any other modern day presidency. Our silence uh, when it comes to our vice president our president, you know, he can't even have a, a, a candid conversation. And then you look at all these things that are happening under his watch that are basically is destroying his legacy, is destroying anything that he's ever built, and is actually exposing who he truly is. Now that the um, documentation have come out that his grandfather was a slaveholder, that he used to kick it with corn pop, the, the, the grand wizard, you know, the uh, 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 the uh, KKK, I wouldn't even say Grand Wizard because he wasn't a Grand Wizard, but he was clearly a member of the Ku Klux Klan. And that's his homeboy, uh, Congressman Byrd. And he called him Corn Pop, said Corn Pop was a good dude. And it's on record by saying he's from Delaware and that's the South. So we have leverage. So if the Biden administration wants to have a successful presidency because this build back better, is, is clearly an indication that you had to break things down to its last compound. If you're gonna build something back better, it's like you know buying a property and tearing it down and building it back better. But when you look at the presidency, when you look at the executive office, these are like, like CEOs at the top. So anytime that a CEO replaces another C CEO, he does not you know, destroy the network or destroy the company. He might put some, you know, fire some people or put different people in place, but by no stretch of the imagination will a good CEO, a good businessman or a good leader destroy what they actually not inherited, but the position that they hold right now. So when I say black America, we have leverage because black is an acronym for black, Latin, Asian, Caucasian kinsmen. In 1964, Lyndon B. Johnson played the black race. We got played. He put the feminist groups, you know, which include white women. He put the LBGTQ community, which includes white men. And then we were downgraded from a race to a minority. Okay, we was black, just like white is white, just like Asian is Asian, but we black or African-American. So the divide and conquer. And we were warned about white liberals, about Jewish liberals, about the liberal entire um, concept, because we look at the, the, the Holy Bible, the, the liberals were uh, anti-Christ. But that's another topic, I'm not going to go there. But what I'm saying is, I'm, I'm speaking to 
conscious people, you know, not, not woke people, conscious people, people who know the truth, the people who see what's going on and their, 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 their silence is golden. Dr. Claude Anderson this week, um, you can see it on YouTube. He was speaking and he broke it down why blacks are so silent. And I added my little spin on it because they, I do spin a lot of things. So the reason why blacks is part of his um, answer and my reaction. The reason why, because 60 plus percent of working class blacks, you're talking about 75,000 plus or 100,000 plus um, as a combined family, 60,000 work for either a municipal, which is city, state, or federal companies, jobs, or just straight for, for the government, which is the feds. So that philosophy and that theory, you don't bite the hand that feeds you whole reins. Because if you're a black person or African-American and you're making over $100,000 and you work for the county, you work for the city, you work for the state, you work for the government, you're not going to actually be honest with your political views because you don't bite the hand that feeds you. And that's real and that's keeping it 100 and that's okay. Because when you look outside that office, there's a whole bunch of field Negroes out there that's waiting for opportunities for field Negroes. So when you look at the LBGTQ community, which Obama championed, because I remember every year when Obama's in the White House, the, the you know the rainbow, you know the the progressive agenda that they have, which is nothing nothing's wrong with that. Identity is fine. Like I said, horror mongers. Um, Every, you know, uh, people, you know, we're in the same box. It, it, like I said, I'm just not trying to make it, it about our sins and what we do. I'm looking at how we as a black race has been the good economic, has been the, the power base, has been a group of people that are so brilliant and marvelous to the fact that we have unknown and unseen enemies that want to make sure that we never have an opportunity to actually do what we're supposed to do. We're the only people that's closely connected to God. So when you say God, man, woman, and child, that makes us who we are. And that's conservative, but this is a whole nother conversation. But I'm talking about the leverage that we have right now. Now, Joe Biden wrote the 94 crime bill. Now, these videos are gonna start coming out. You guys are gonna start seeing the truth because God's people shall not perish due to the lack of knowledge. So wrap your mind around, you know, being in a position to champion you know, not only a race, but your community, okay? Every other race and culture has been championed, just like when Hillary Clinton was running. She was talking about championing women, championing the LBGTQ community, okay? The white race is the champion. The Asian race uh, got the bronze medal, and there's a silver, silver medal for the black race that's sitting right there, but for some strange reason, we can't even get close to the podium because we have any and everything blocking it because they want to have that power that's not there. So it's fake and it's fabricated. So now, since we see what's going on, since the Democratic Party right now is getting a felling grade, don't take my word for a grain of salt. Go ahead yourself and Google um, the approval rating for the president and the vice president, and it's never been that low in American history. This is why you're not seeing this, okay? It's terrible. It's to the point where his legacy, in just in one year, his whole political record is tarnished. But what I'm saying is we have leverage. Now, black, the black race, more importantly, black heterosexual men, we have an opportunity to come together and champion ourselves. They told Dr. King, pull yourselves up by your own bootstraps. And Dr. King was under the impression that he could go to Washington and cut a check. And before he even was thought about having a dream, he was working on the Poor People's Party. And this is probably why they shot him. Now, if you look at the 60s, look at the 60s, look at that whole era, John Kennedy, uh, Malcolm X, Martin, Bobby Kennedy. John Kennedy said to himself, and probably one of the most powerful statements that any sitting president can say or any running pre uh, incumbent or somebody running for president. He said, ask not what your country could do for you, but what you can do for your country.